claiming human rights for communities affected by industry, industries, extractive industries. Ladies and gentlemen, the right to livelihood in many African countries has been underplayed. It has never been recognized as a fundamental human right. And that has allowed government to take resources, life supporting resources, from communities and leave them without nothing, and nobody is able to hold them accountable. The Kingdom of Lesotho, the country I come from, is potentially one of the most richest countries in the world. It is famously known for its purest diamonds and the waters that are of the highest chemical standard in the world. And these resources continue to make millions of dollars every day for my country for, for, and for the government. But the people remain poor and subjected to abject poverty, faced with so many social ills as a result of incapacities that are hindering them from taking care of themselves. When I was a child, my father was a farmer, and he owned a great deal of land. But sometime in 2007, when he passed on, I was only 13 years old and forced to take on his responsibilities as the man of the house. You know why? Because my mother as a woman was not allowed to hold title over land, so I had to take the responsibilities. Soon after that, the government took the land from us for purposes of development. And to date, my parents or my mother has not been able to receive the compensation from that land. Ever since that time, my siblings' future and I have been threatened. We were not able to pay for our fees. We were not able to put food on the table. And so was everyone else around us who equally depended on that land for the general sustenance of life itself. And guess what? 15 years later, here I am. The problem is still subsisting. You know, I still believe that it was my motivation to study law when I went to university, so that I can be able to fight these injustices on behalf of my people. But when I grew up up to today, I realized that it is the government that has been causing all these problems that the world see about our country globally, because they have failed to recognize fundamental human rights that will ensure that people have their own means that are important to sustain their own lives. So today, there is an influx of extractive industry that is happening in my country. Many foreign mining companies are coming in to invest in the diamond sector. And the, the, we have water that is also being uh, extracted to be transported to countries like Botswana, South Africa, and Eswatini for sales. Ladies and gentlemen, for the past five years, this is the revenue that my country makes every day from these natural resources. When you look on the right, on the left, this is the revenue generated from water every year. On the left side, this is the revenue generated from the sale of diamonds every year. But these are the communities. The same communities from which these resources are taken. These are the communities that live on these diamonds and water-rich lands that the government is taking every day. Because a right to livelihood is not recognized as a fundamental human right, the government is able to drive these people out of their lands and seize from them their properties and give the land to the investors for diamond extraction and water extraction, and the communities are left stranded. More futures, more children's futures are constantly threatened every day as their families are not able to take care of themselves. So in my quest to address these problems, I went further to study a master's degree in human rights law, doing my research on the impacts of extractive industries in my country. And I found that these communities were better off before these commercial diamond mining companies came into their places than after they did. You know why? Because these communities did not depend on cash economies. These communities depended on diamonds for exchange of goods and services. They used to diamonds to pay for fees. That was the currency in the community. And they would occasionally sell it to transit buyers who came from the neighboring South Africa to bring the cash in. Furthermore, in the, yes, in the, in, in the quest to further uh, address these problems, I went further to come to the precinct for the Mandela Watintin Fellowship. And during my time here, I met a great lawyer in, the, in Virginia, in Charlottesville, with whom I have been able to establish a partnership that is going to 
uh, establish a foundation that will mobilize resources to support initiatives that will make sure that my government is held accountable and the investors will have the responsibility to bring back the revenue taken from this, uh, the revenue taken from these lands back to the community before they profit from them in the international world. So I hereby today invite you to join me and the team and to join me to the foundation that I have established so that we can collectively hold hands to find the global market buyers of these diamonds so that we can make them aware that these are the black diamonds that are not benefiting the people from which they were taken. Thank you very much. <laughs>